Titles. Go. Not a Skywalker in sight. John Carpenter. Oh, fuck. Well, I'm not going to stop and start again. John Carter's got nothing on you. Well, to be fair, they neither of them have anything on you. <laughs> Let Darwinism happen. Always three there are. Three Jawas in a trench coat. A fart in a metal suit. <laughs> Very Star Wars heavy tonight. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do this. Warning. What you are about to hear contains explicit language, adult themes, and potentially disturbing content. The views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the opinions of anyone else, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. This podcast is intended for an immature audience and should not be listened to by anyone, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. You know, fuck it. You've been warned. Hello, welcome to this week's edition of Geek Pod. I'm your host, Paul. I'm Hugh. Oh, and it's just, I'm it. I'm Kev. <laughs> Guys, what's got you geeked? Well, I had, I picked out one thing and I was going to say, I could tell you all about my trip to Texas, but there's only three of us. So I guess I can tell you all about my trip to Texas. Actually, I'll keep it short, but, um, the trip to Texas for the Rev event was awesome. Um, we had a great time. The first two days I was there, I took a PTO, and it was just Avery and I walking around Austin doing cool shit. The first day, we walked to a place called Cidercade, which was over the bridge and down the river. And uh, 12 bucks got in and got to play unlimited games. They had a, a room full of pinball tables. I added so many pinball tables to my list of ones I haven't played. Plus they had a bunch of, you know, arcade games and shooting games. I got a picture of Avery playing Ms. Pac-Man. I'm like, really? You're playing this? She sat there forever playing that game. First time she's ever seen it. Um, Great game. But, yeah, yeah, it's a good game, but I didn't think it would hold the imagination of a uh, 12 year old in 2023. Uh, also, we were right next to our hotel was like next to the Bat Bridge. I don't know if you know about this, but the uh, the bridge right there in Austin is home to the largest um, urban colony of bats in the United States. They come up from Mexico every year, and we got to watch it right down, like, under the... We were, like... You can walk under the bridge on either side, but, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was, like, 15 feet from where the bridge is actually over us, but there was a place to stand and watch it. And as dusk hits, millions and millions of bats just come out of there. It's like something out of a horror movie, like Transylvania mm -hmm. vampire movie. Absolutely awesome. insane. It was one of the coolest, coolest things. And you know what? None of us brought our phones, so we didn't get any pictures of it, but it means we actually got to experience it, which doesn't always happen. Um, the next day, Avery and I walked around downtown and stuff, and we went to the museum, uh, the Museum of the Weird, the Toy Museum, uh, voodoo donuts, some shops, things like that. Um, we did, I did like 25,000 steps a day in 108 degree heat. <laughs> um, it was crazy. Uh, but we, we got a lot of stuff done. Um, found one of my uh, Holy Grail uh, toy collections. I think I sent you uh, a guys a picture of that. I found the 11 Doctors box set that came out in like 2013 that I've never been able to find anywhere. I, I saw it for a hundred bucks years ago at an FYE, didn't pick it up. Oh, I'll get that later. Now you can't find it for less than 300. Anyway, yeah. got one for 50 bucks. I'm pretty happy about nice. that. Wow. Yeah. It was open and it was missing the third doctor who uh, I went on eBay and ordered him and he was waiting for me when we got home. Now, oh, nice. Um, anyway, that, that was the, the second day of just us doing stuff. The third day was the actual company event and uh, a little bit dry in some places, but it was still really cool. Um, they started off by having everyone say, you know, what year did you start? And they worked backwards and you, you'd raise your hand when they said your year. And then they said, okay, we want everybody to come up front and get an order by year going um, early earliest to latest and i was shocked to find i was like six people ahead of the owner of the company wow yeah i mean i was right there you know damara was right ahead of me i mean it was it was crazy um 
but overall, um, it was a great experience. We got to talk. I probably can't talk about it, but we got to talk to some of our bigger customers, like companies you guys would know. They actually came to talk to us nice. and, and about how they use us and how they want to use us. And it was just so cool. And really, they gave us the kind of like the roadmap for where the what we want to do with our technology. And it, it's pretty damn exciting to see companies already using it in that way. So um, that was a blast. After that, we had like a company event. We all went out to eat and everything. And then the flight home. <laughs> oh, my God. So we get to the airport. We're sitting there. We're waiting to get on our first plane. I look out the window. I see the engine open. That doesn't look good. We sit there. Our, the time goes by. Eventually, like, you know, we're grounding this flight. There's nothing we can do. This this plane isn't going to oh, be well. taking off. So we're like, okay. I mean, we don't, we missed a connecting flight on the way there, too. So, I mean, we're like, here we go again. So we go up. We talk to them. We get moved to a different flight. We um, get there. and We had to run because that airport's huge. We get to our other flight. And... They get us on the plane, they start taxiing, and then they turn back and they're like, this plane isn't taking off uh, nice. because it was a problem with the air conditioner. I'm like, are you fucking kidding? Does Delta have any planes that go in the sky today? Mm. I mean, I, I don't know what the chances of that are, but um, so we're like, fuck, what are we going to do? So they they say, OK, we're going to we're going to give you a hotel and we're going to book you a flight tomorrow. So they sent us to a hotel. Um, it was all right. You know, we got to sleep for like three or four hours. Um, Avery didn't sleep at all because we didn't have extra medicine for her. We were supposed right. to be back. So she never went to bed. Um, we get back there the, the next day. We get on our plane and and they, they said they booked the connecting flight and we were worried because there was like 30 minutes between uh, when our plane was supposed to land and the connecting flight. We get there. Of course, everything's running behind. We run through the De Detroit airport. I mean, really running on the moving walkways. And mm -hmm. those things like spit you off. It's actually kind of fucking cool. I was having a blast, <laughs> even though it was a big sweaty mess. Um, we get there. They're like, oh, this plane's full. We don't have any room for you. Like what? And apparently the lady in Texas didn't actually book us on a flight. She put us on standby. Now, I understand standbys for when people just show up and, you know, they didn't book their flight or whatever, but we had paid for flights. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand they got to shuffle things around, but I feel like, you know, the customers that paid for their flights should be the ones getting on. Now, I, I started getting a little uh about it and I was going to walk away and go use the bathroom. And the other lady there at the desk heard me and she's like, oh, wait, hold on. And then somehow magically they found us three seats mm -hmm. and got Magic. us on there at the last. Yeah. But I'm just like, you know what? Why, why would you send us to an airport and hope we find a connecting flight? <laughs> anyway, we won't be flying Delta again. Um, we finally made it home. So overall, other than the travel part, it was a really good trip. Um, and since I wasn't going to tell you all of that, I was going to condense it into three sentences. The other thing that has me geek is something that happened um, just the other day. Uh, I kind of gotten out of the habit with all the vacations and the work trips and everything. Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten that I was making a habit of when I get up in the morning, taking my shower and then playing a game of pinball to just wake my brain up before I start my work day, you know? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. So I do that. I think it was Sunday. I don't know what, what day it was. Load up Mars, Mar, uh, attack from Mars. You know, it's my, my favorite table. Now this game has five waves where you have to hit the shields to bring down the shields. And then you have to hit the, um, the, the Martian saucer a number of times to take it down. There are five saucers to take down. Then you turn the tables, you go to Mars, you take down the shield, and then you, you're attacking Mars and you can blow up Mars. Okay. Um, and each level, you know, it takes more hits. It gets harder and harder. My best score on the table at that point had been about around 4 billion. My first ball goes right in the fucking shitter right off the bat. You know, oh, man. By the time I lost my second ball, I had beaten all five saucers and beaten Mars. And I have never been able to take down more than three saucers with three balls because the way that game's designed is when you hit the shields to take it down, it tries to drop down the middle. It's really hard to get it right because you have to hit it at an angle so it bounces off at an angle. I ended up 
with like 14.2 billion points at the end. I, I, I beat my best score by like 10 billion. Now, in the grand scheme of things, I'm like 185 on the worldwide leaderboard now. Maybe that's okay, considering that's hundreds of thousands of players all over the world. But I'm not going to say, ooh, I'm 185. Um, but considering it was first thing in the morning and I'd done nothing like it before and I haven't been able to replicate it since, I, I don't know. It was just so fucking cool to have that game, to be in that zone. And man, I, I hope I can achieve something like that again. Yeah. Sounds like John Carter's got nothing on you. Exactly. Nobody saw that movie. No one's I didn't even see it. I just know. And the people that know it from like the books are all dead now. So (laughs) how about you, Kev? I don't know. I mean, I I just I don't know. I've been so I've been so freaking tied up with shit going on at work. I just haven't had a chance to do anything new. Um it's got me geeked. I mean, I'm happy about happy about Ahsoka finally being out. That's got me pretty well geeked. I've been really um, diving deep, 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 deep into that and some of the myth and the lore behind it. And um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to check out those YouTube channels I told you about, but the guy just ties so much together. It's so cool. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's where I'm at. I'm Kathy and I are really geeking out over that. Um, watched every episode twice so far. Just watched the uh, third one again. But we'll talk about that later. Yes, mm-hmm. fourth. Yeah, fourth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I yeah, have a so, theory. Yeah, I have theories too, and I don't know if we really want to discuss them on the show, or if we want to discuss them after. But I have, I have some very interesting theories, and I have they're my own. I haven't gleaned them from anyone else, um, but it's because of specific things I heard said in the show. And uh, I would, I would, I would love to uh, to throw those theories around. Well, you know my theory already. We, we've discussed. I this do. Already. Yes. Yes. And always three of, changer. Always three. There are never more. We'll get to that. Uh, but what's got me geeked is harkening back to a couple weeks ago, uh, Sci-Fi Horror Fest. Uh, I would that say fun. that was an unmitigated yeah. success, except that for the live fun. show. Um, <laughs> I mean, we had a blast at the live show and the audience had fun. It's just, uh, hotel technology, um, gave it to us raw is what they did. Yeah. Um, uh, we, when we tested earlier on, I think I said this last episode before we released the live show as an episode, uh, when we tested, it sounded great. I was standing watching on the big screen geek pods opening theme and it sounded great. Looked awesome. I was so excited for this live show. And then everything went to shit when we started you have any idea what changed or what happened it fucked with the audio is what happened yeah and yeah. they wouldn't fix it they wouldn't they wouldn't they kept saying that it was exactly it was what it was already supposed to be. fixed yeah this the guy was over. a fucking moron yeah yeah jack almost fought him it was great oh really um, i mean that's over it was stating it but it was jack was in his face yelling at him but it was I that bad him. yeah it was that and the guy kept walking away yeah he knew there was a problem and he just kept walking away um, but other than that, I had a great time. Um, I, uh, Jack and I, and Jack's not here to relate the story with me, but Jack and I are close personal friends with R.A. Milahoff, who played Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. You, you know? You're close personal friends now. Yes. <laughs> because of events that happened at places that we can no longer talk about, because what happens at a con stays, stays con. at a con. All, all I'll say is the best line of the night was, where are you going, motherfucker? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, good times. He's a, he's a blast. He's a lot of fun. So, um, But yes, can't wait for next year. Uh, it sounds like the planning has already started and um, dates have been moved around. It's going to be a little bit earlier next year, which works out for all of us, I think. So, Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, but let's keep moving it right along, guys. Um, yeah. What are you playing? I'm waiting for Kevin to say something. No, I was just. I think he thought I was going into a. No, I was going to tell you that the con next year falls on my wife's birthday. Well, Uh, Kevin probably won't be there next year, (laughs) (sighs) which is completely understandable. We'll see. Yeah. (laughs) Bring her along. There's that. No. (laughs) Um, Well, I I actually, 
did something kind of interesting this week. Um, it, and it came from the most ridiculous thing ever. So um, I, I don't think you, you don't listen to Octane, Paul, so you, you, you mm-hmm. wouldn't know this. But the radio station Octane on Sirius XM is a big player in finding new hard rock stars and, and getting them out there. Mm-hmm. They have their own concerts and everything now. So Octane's a pretty big deal. And recently they were involved in a movie production called The Retaliators, uh, which was a horror revenge slasher type movie that starred a bunch of the bands that play whose music is on, um, on the station and a bunch of their songs ended up on the soundtrack. It was kind of like a, um, a who's who of the modern rock scene, you know, like five, the whole band five figure death punch was in there. The lead singer, Papa Roach and a bunch of other ones. Uh, so yeah, I finally got around to watching it during the movie. I hear this snippet of music and it goes, and this is going to sound awful because of my throat, but it's like, and that's something I've heard in lots of horror movies. I heard it. I remember the first time I heard it was way, way, way back in an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer during a chase sequence. And I'm like, I know that music. And it, I'd heard it before. It must be something that's like free and lots of people license it, right? I finally track it down and I figure out where I heard it the first time. And that was in a a video game from 1996 called Nocturne by a company called Terminal Reality. They're the same company that made the Blood Rain games. You're probably familiar with those. Um, But Nocturne was uh, basically set in a a horror type world. There is uh, an entity that manages supernatural happenings, you know, across the world. They send their people in there and uh, it what I found really interesting about the world, because I remember, I, I think I played the game briefly, or maybe I found out about it. Um, years ago, they did a, a series of three Blair Witch horror games, which were kind of the same thing, you know, like isometric, third uh, person, but you're you're walking around, and it was like the backstory of the Blair Witch. And one of the characters was actually one of the characters from Nocturne. They actually connected the universes. So the Blair Witch happens in the same universe as this game. So I went and found the game, found lots of people who said, this doesn't run on a modern computer. Good old games needs to redo it, whatever. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about because I have Nocturne up and running on my computer now. And uh, I'm going to start a playthrough of it. Uh, The controls are a challenge because this was back before we knew how to control it. It's it's rough. Um, but, But it's also pretty cool just getting something that old up and running. Uh, you know, and not something that's been ported or remastered or put on a platform and and tweaked so that it would run on modern modern uh, hardware. Uh, it's funny though. Every time I run it, it, it doesn't even talk about RAM. It comes up with Windows needs two hundred megabytes of something or other to run this. <laughs> this may not run properly, and I'm like, oh. Okay, <laughs> whatever you're talking about, I'm pretty sure that this crappy computer has 16 gigabytes of those. It doesn't seem to recognize it, but it's not affecting how it's running. It's just it's it's confused. It doesn't know where it is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Now, how did you get it to run? I mean, it, you I have just to... ran it. Oh, I I found Reddit threads about people saying, "Oh, I wish I could run this game. I loved this so much. They need to redo it." I just fucking found it, downloaded it, and installed it. Maybe it's because my my personal computer is an old piece of shit. I don't know, but I got lucky. Yeah, I think I did. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, cool uh, things just work, right? Now you're uh, you're starting a playthrough of a game that's ancient, and I'm playing one that's technically not even available yet for the PlayStation Five. I believe. uh, Well, by the time of this writing, it should be fully released. Uh, I'm playing uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, You're just doing it for the horse sex or bear sex, aren't you? Bald? Bald? Baldur. It's a it's a famous location in Dungeons & Dragons. I get Baldur and Baldur every day. You and me both. And not as bad as Jack from what we've seen. Yeah. Um, What's that like? He kind of looks like a monk. You ever notice that? The way yes. he's, it's like perfectly round in the back and it's like bear. <laughs> yes. I think he... I think he I think he brushes, brushes all forward. the hair out all the way around like a little dish. <laughs> um, what's what like? Uh, Baldur's Gate three? No, losing your hair. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you lose a lot of it, but you have plenty that it just keeps replenishing. Yeah. So you got the dirty shrimp. So dirty shrimp. 
What? You don't re- there was an Avery-ism. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I remember that. Um, um, I'm, I'm enjoying Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not quite sure why in character creation I can choose um, which version of a penis or um, vulva I Dude, want. The, 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 apparently, the sex in that game is very graphic. I've not gotten to that point yet. Well, make sure your kids are in the room when you do. No, they know they're oh not going to be down here for PlayStation at all. They they stay no. right away from the PlayStation. Uh, but it's a really so it could be cool PlayStation, game. could be porn, whatever. Right, exactly. Um... <laughs> the, the light is on the air. That's all that matters. Right. Yeah. Um, but it is the closest it's I've ever come to seeing an actual like real Dungeons and Dragons in a video game. You actually have to roll for checks and uh, and all this stuff too and you can fail rolls and stuff and there's oh, inspiration wow. yes it's awesome uh and like your dialogue choices matter like how you interact with like the npcs and stuff it's it changes the the way of the game and it's really fucking cool so far well it's neat yeah it's really cool yeah um so how much was it and what is it what is it available on it's been available on PC for a couple of months. Oh, you did say that. Yes, it just it either just became available or will be available in the next couple of days on PlayStation Five. Uh, I believe it was seventy nine ninety nine. I did the digital deluxe download, which gave me the four days or three days extra lead time and all that, and extra goodies, I, I, which I haven't gotten to yet. Um, but. I don't believe there's any release for uh, an Xbox yet either. So I don't know if I'm in the right place or not. Is this D and D Beyond? Is that what? No, no. that is no. the online version of Dungeons and oh, Dragons. No, no, this is so called Baldur's, Baldur's Gate. And it, it's on Steam. Yep. Oh, Baldur's Gate three on yes. Steam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So real fun. Uh, there is online crossplay. Apparently, you can party with other people. But I'm not like it's, you can you party like it's 1999. <laughs> Probably that's funny you bring that up. That's one of Madison's favorite songs right now. For whatever reason, yeah, no, I don't know. And that has nothing to do with Baldur's Gate three, but uh, yeah, super cool so far. I'm not really far into. It. I'm still in Act one. I did um level up to level two though, which got me extra spells that I can do because I I chose um a paladin again. So, oh, big surprise! Yeah, staying with the same theme, even with the the same character name, I'm going to use for when we actually get around to playing D and D. So, you? um, you you you'd like it though, Kev, because the first enclave we find is a bunch of druids and a bunch of tieflings. So a bunch of your little tieflings. Demonic, yep, your my people, demonic fuckers. Yep, running all over the place. So come on, tieflings are cool. They are cool, but they make them very demonic in the game. Well, they are kind of not hard. like the I mean, they have horns yeah. and tails. And... Yeah. Do they have cloven feet? It looks like it. Yes. Yeah. So kind of makes sense that they would. Yeah. But that's all I've got. That's uh, I I got to play. I think for a total of an hour so far since I've gotten the three day lead time. <laughs> and that's all I got. And I think that brings us right around to what I'm playing. Yes. Um, I was oh is that your lead into now it's we're hitting your theme music mm-hmm. hit it okay so this week is just going to be a continuation of our last show what I mean by that is I want to give you a little bit of a more uh, in-depth rundown of what uh, Splendor Duel is like. Now, I don't have it all laid out. I'm not going to show you any pictures. You know, you can go and you can find pictures. You can find video. You can go to last week's uh, or our last episode, rather, which was uh, we filmed it during uh, the, the uh, Sci-Fi Horror Fest. And you can see our layout. You can see how the game works. You can see um, all there is to know about it. What you're not going to see is how much time I have invested in that game uh, since then. I brought it home. Well, we played it quite a bit at the at the um, con, and 
uh, my wife and I have been playing it pretty well nonstop since I've been home. We've had probably six, eight games under our, our, our belt. Um, and we have, we have learned quite a bit about how the game works and the different mechanisms of the game and how many different ways there are to play the game. And the one thing that we have, that I have learned, and I'm, I'm going to give this to you is, um, the right way to play this game, in in my opinion, in, in, in my experience. You have to understand there are multiple ways to win, right? You can block your opponent. You have three different things that you can collect to win, and that is the um, the prestige points, the crowns, or the gray banners. So understanding that and looking at your board every single time you play which is always going to be different the layout of the tokens are going to be different the layout of the cards are going to be different but you have to look at the layout and you have to understand what you're doing and you and with a with an engine builder like this you really need to think about how do i put more of these gems in my hand so that i can get more expensive cards and more expensive cards are better parts of the engine. They may contain more gems. They may contain more prestige points. They may contain more crowns. They may contain more gray banners. The reality is, and my wife will tell you this, you can't always play for crowns. Because if that's your focus every single time, the board is sometimes not going to work out in your favor. And if you're if, if that's your focus and that's what you're trying to do, you'll probably lose more than you'll win. So what you do is you look at the game, you look at the layout, you look and you see what you have to work with, and you understand that you know, you have to collect the right tokens to buy the right cards to get you more tokens, to get you more cards, to get you more tokens, to build up your points. The best thing you could possibly do, and here's where my tip comes in, the best thing you could possibly do is work on at least two methods to win at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So if you're collecting prestige points, make sure you're also collecting crowns, right? If you are working towards that card that has three crowns on it, make sure you reserve that card. Reservations are not just to block your enemy, your, your, your player, your other player. They are also to allow you to put a card away for later purchase. I have ended almost every single game with cards and reservation that I did not buy. Part of the reason was because I put them away uh, so that my opponent could not have them. The other part of it was maybe, maybe I thought I was going to go that direction and I didn't do that. So the last time I ended up with, um, there was a card that was worth eight onyx and it had three crowns on it. That stayed in reservation. There was another card underneath it that had it was worth, it had two rubies and give it would give me two rubies and it cost, I don't know, it was a ridiculous uh, amount that it cost. Um, and it also had two prestige on. So these cards, you know, like I, they were left over. Um, the very last game we played, both my wife and I misdrew to the point where we were both stuck. We could not buy cards. We could not draw more tokens. So it was a it was a draw, and we had we, we both had to basically forfeit. Um, I forfeited first, so I lost the game. You really have to look. You can't look too far ahead. I mean, that if you're looking three or four moves ahead, you're probably better be ready to make a make a change. But if you're looking at least two moves ahead, then you can really really easily make an adjustment when the time comes. And that's that's the key. That's winning or losing, being able to make an adjustment when things don't quite go your way. A card comes up that's better than the one you want, or the card you wanted gets reserved. You can't let a single card not being available hinder your progress. If it does, you're not focused on the right thing on the game. So that's what I've learned. And we've been having so much fun with it. We've just been having a great time with it. The very last game we played, I, I um, the, the, the first couple of games Kathy and I played, they were very, very close, very close. Within a card or two for each one of us, you know, for, we went back and forth several times. The last two games we played, I was, I was, I'm, I'm more familiar with the game, so I was a little bit further ahead. 
Um, she realized what her mistakes were and, and she's hoping that I'll be kind to her on the next game. But the reality is, is you learn as you go with any game, but this game just becomes more and more and more fun the more you play it. So I can't suggest Splendor Duel enough if you have just one other person that you can play a game with. And it doesn't matter if you have three or four people in the family. Maybe you only have one person that you can play with at a time or other people are busy or whatever. A two-person game is still a very valuable thing to have. I looked back at my other Splendor game. That has two, three, and four player modes. So if you don't want to just get a, a Splendor Duel, get a normal Splendor game and look at the instructions about how to play two, three, or four player because that can be just as much fun. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, this is so easy to set up. It's very, very fun to, to play. It's nice to handle. The tokens, are, they have a really nice feel to them, a really nice weight. Um, it's very, very well built. It's attractive, and it's just a ton of fun. I'm more sold on Splendor the more time I have with it. That's what I wanted to bring to you is how happy I am that I'm a, a, a Splendor owner. Nice. All right, so I think we'll throw it to break. And when we come back, it's time for the news. Stick with us, guys. Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. to be a wrestler, come on down to Upstate Wrestling Entertainment, located at 1121 Glenwood Avenue in Nine New York. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. until 9 p.m. Come on down and join us. See you then. Before you pull the down the tinfoil you used to block the government from tracking and taking away your gas grill over the Labor Day weekend, here's the news. First up, is it Wedding Man now? Do you like summer outdoor festivals and concerts? What if you had to live there? That's what happened this year at the Burning Man Festival in Black Rock mm. City, Nevada. Last week, historic torrential rains flooded the desert and turned the entire area into a muddy disaster. It was so bad that the concert goers were stranded at being told to shelter in place and conserve food until it was safe to drive out. 70,000 people were stuck there with no working toilets, no one to pump out the porta potties, just flooding in full porta potties. Talk about shit creek. On Monday, they finally got the green light to start heading out. All participants, having learned the same lesson Woodstock 93 taught the previous generation breathe through your mouth. Next up, from pipe bomb to pipe fitter. After a second backstage altercation at the All Out pay per view in Wembley Stadium, AEW has announced a beloved wrestler and persistent backstage carcinogenic agent, CM Punk, has been fired. This has been a sad way to end what looked like was going to be one of the biggest comeback stories in professional wrestling. During the two years he was back, Punk spent half that time recovering from injury or suspended. Now, while I know Paul loves CM Punk, I missed his entire time in the WWE, so this was my first exposure. And while he certainly got the crowd going and was good on the mic, it really didn't seem like he was worth all the trouble he caused. 
All I saw was him talking about wanting to give back, but it sure seemed like he was taking more than he was giving. At this point, it's hard to imagine any company thinking he's just the kind of divisive employee they're looking for. Lucky for him, he already looks like a journeyman plumber, so I think he'll be fine. And finally, the Atlantic 7K. Ready for a Florida man story? 44-year-old Reza Bellucci built a watercraft out of buoy, steel, and paddles that greatly resembled a hamster wheel. The paddles were powered by the operator running inside the wheel, much like a small rodent getting nowhere fast. His intent was to run to London to raise money for charity. Sounds like a stand-up guy, right? Hold on. Well, right up until he gets stopped by the Coast Guard 70 miles off the coast of Georgia and told this is an unsafe water vehicle. He then proceeded to threaten the Coast Guard with a knife, threatened to kill himself, and said he had a bomb on board. It took six days for him to finally give up and leave the craft. Six days. The Coast Guard just sat around for almost a week to wait him out. He might have made it to London by then. Now, I understand that authorities have to look out for safety, but this is the guy's fifth attempt at this. He even said he's going to try again. So I say, just let him go. At the very least, his build actually works. It's not like he's trying to sail to the UK in a bathtub with a Garmin tied to one end. Can you imagine how much it costs for the Coast Guard to hang out for those six days? Let Darwinism happen, people. It's cheaper. <laughs> and that's the news. Now, I want to take a moment to recognize the health struggles of the aging former leader of the GOP, Mitch McConnell. He's had a rough few weeks, and I just wanted to show our support with this. Could I ask the question a little louder? Paul? <laughs> in other news, it's illegal to own just one guinea pig in Switzerland. Back to you, Court. Nope. You, J nope. Commercial break? I guess we're going right back to the commercial break after I give you guys your weekly topic. <clears throat> what is the one movie? that you know the script by heart. You can quote it from beginning to end. And the boys will answer that question when we return. Stick with us, guys. Hi, this is Craig Palmer. If you ever aspire to be a wrestler, come on down to Upstate Wrestling Entertainment, located at 1121 Glenwood Avenue, 90 New York. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. until 9 p.m. Come on down and join us. See you then. <laughs> Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. sound means it's time for the weekly topic let me reiterate what's a movie that you know the script by heart you can quote this movie start to finish you i got nothing there isn't anything that i know that well huh? i mean 
I'd make a good run at Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, mm. maybe, but I, there, there definitely is not anything out there where I know every single line. Okay, fair enough. Kev? Sorry, don't mean to take the air out of your question. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a couple that that I could probably go along with, you know, I and I could definitely quote from. Is there one that I know chapter and verse and yeah i no i mean i don't really have one that i i i could probably rehearse all of you know star wars what they what they now call a new hope um what i call star wars because that's what it was when, when it was mm-hmm. released um but i think i think that's a little bit too easy you know i mean for a geek i think i would rather say that i would be able to um hum along with oh brother where art thou i've never seen that that's a fun fun movie george clooney i might be able to make a pretty good run at highlander too oh there you go i love the highlander movies yes which they're in the process of remaking apparently they have oh really they have been for years. I mean, when yeah. it happens, I'll not that I don't believe it, but I mean, this has had so many different people attached to it. It starts and stops. Times. Yeah. Yeah. Long now as that we're, comes back. That depends on whether they're actually going to reboot it or are they going to go with a whole different. Yeah. You know, I mean, he'll still be a McLeod, but they may do a completely different story. Um, They said that the last article I read, because this is the now it's got Henry Cavill attached and they're actually writing. And um, they are re rebooting, and they are going to take elements from all the stuff that did work with the movies and the TV series, because wow. they would they want to they want to be able to make this a franchise that makes sense this time. <laughs> yeah, but you know the the problem with that number one problem, as What's much that? as I love, I'm hiring Henry Cable. You think he's not he's not gonna be able to commit. I mean, he has so many other the mm. irons in the fire, and he yeah. always keeps adding more. Now he's you know, he's got the Warhammer 40k thing, yes. and uh he still has the Kingsmen, and who knows if if he'll end up back playing Superman after all, you know, Warner Brothers <laughs> announcing all these, oh, we're getting rid of more projects and we're losing money and everything. So I just I, I love the guy, but he can't be in everything. True. And, it's- are we sure that he's not going to be the Witcher in season four? Mm-hmm. I mean, as sure as we can be, they haven't started filming, um, so we don't have anybody, you know, on set confirming that he's not there. But unless it's a, a big work, <laughs> so so here's what I mean. I know it's a little bit off of what we're talking about right now, but I just want to I want to throw this out there. At the end of season three. I thought they were going to leave him so wounded, so damaged that they were going to leave themselves an out for some sort of a rebirth or regeneration. Not that I know anything about the Witcher. And I do know that the Witcher can re, you know, can regenerate broken bones and they can heal themselves and, and it takes, takes time. I thought maybe between him, his own healing abilities and Yennefer and, and maybe some of her potions, incantations, whatever, maybe they would, you know, do something and he would come back and he would look different. You know what I mean? And that's that's how they would play it, but that's not how they left that's not how they left the season. The the showrunners said that there will be an in-universe reason for it. And it's been hinted at that it might have something to do with the fact that, you know, Siri, we've seen her now cross into other realities, other worlds. Yeah. I, I think that it's gonna be the Ger- Geralt from a different world. That's just uh, my okay. my take on it, which I think is stupid. They should have let his face get fucked up at the end of that battle and done exactly what you said. That would have made more sense. But. I mean, it would have made sense if they wanted to change the actor. Right. Doctor Who, it's a Doctor Whoism. <laughs> anyway, so what, what was yours, Paul? Uh, like, um, if we don't know. Actually, as uh, A New Hope. Actually, all of the original trilogy. I, I can, well, that's not true. I guess that would be Jedi and A New Hope. I can I can go right along with and of course clerks, but because <laughs> that's what everyone was expecting to hear. So, <laughs> but what it sounds like we already jumped into. Oh, can't hear a word you're saying. What? You just went. You went out. 
Am I back now or no? You're back. Station. You're you're fine, Paul. Hugh, it's actually you. You're cutting in. Is it me? Yeah, you oh, were you were now. That's what freaked me out. But now it sounds like you're back. Sound sounds fine now. Okay. Yeah. We're leaving all that in, just so you know. Yeah. That's... Okay. I, I would. <laughs> he was cracking um, up. Ah, there's a the title. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so like I said, it looked like we've already bled into it, but let's uh, let's make it official. Guys, what you watching? Oh, man. Oh, man. I am just so getting into Ahsoka. And it's more than just, I think it's really more than just the character. And Filoni did a ph- phenomenal job, again, by giving us another reason, something else. Okay, there's the character there's the characters, there's the, you know, the ghost crew, there's, there's Ahsoka and we're all wonderfully happy that they're together and they're out there and, and we're seeing them again. But then there's this other thing. There's this new galaxy. There's these new possibilities. There's these new openings for more stories that have nothing to do with anything that we've ever known before. Not so, a Skywalker in sight. Not a Skywalker in sight and nothing to do with that. Maybe nothing even to do with with Jedi at all. Maybe something completely different. So Filoni's just doing a phenomenal freaking job. And I'm going to say it again. I want to just get it out there. The um, new rock stars. This guy does a breakdown of every single Ahsoka show. And he really, I mean, he really ties it back to older written Star Wars material, legends, stuff that is or is maybe is not canon yet. Um, and he really ties it all together, and he decoded the star map at the end Ooh. of the show, of each episode. He decoded it. It's freaking awesome. That one by itself is worth watching, because he talks about how he decodes it. It's just basically decryption 101. He walks you through it, shows you exactly how he did it. Once you see how he did it, you'd be like, oh, I, I could do that. But it's it's freaking fantastic. I absolutely love it. I have theories about where we're going. I would love to voice them, but I'll leave it up to my fellow compatriots here and whether or not I do that. All right. First, Hugh, you're caught up, right? Yes, I'm caught up. Okay. I just want to know, like, uh, so was that like like big scary dude everyone thought was someone else, just a fart in a metal suit? Because that's what it looked like to me. <laughs> All has a theory. Yes, look, you're leading right into it. I am convinced. Okay. Convinced. Uh, it's, it's definitely characters we've seen before. That metal suit, three Jawas and a trench coat. Um, You saw the most recent episode, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, um, I mean, we it wasn't three Jawas and a trench okay. coat. Okay, we know that. More realistically, this is what this is exactly what happened, and I've watched it several times now, so I can tell you for a fact this is what happened. When Ahsoka cut him open, and the gas escaped from inside of him, it was a green mist. Where do we see green mist and green flame? It always has to do with the Night Sisters. When they enhanced Maul's brother, um, what was his name? He ended up being called Savage. Um, uh, 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 Savage, yeah. Opress. Savage Opress, yeah. So when they enhanced him, he they used this green energy they have to make him more powerful and bigger and stronger. And then when he died, this green mist came out of him. When Ahsoka cut Maroc open, green mist escaped. Now, some of the theories that I've seen were that this guy was the inquisitor that was they don't they don't say for a fact he was killed, but they think he was killed on that planet where in Rebels they went to um uh Maul Maul and Ezra went to get the the um Seth, uh, uh, Sith Holocron. And Ahsoka and Vader ended up fighting. But before that, this one Inquisitor went to take off with his damaged lightsaber and it blew apart in air and he fell. We think it's that guy. And I don't remember his name, but they think it's that guy that got 
resurrected, repaired, whatever, enhanced by the Night Sisters. That's what I think. This is my theory, um, just based on some other stuff I've seen, and then this now with the green mist escaping. So that's that's my realistic theory. Other theories were that it might be Ezra or Canaan, and I'm glad those are now put to rest because there's no possible way. I, it's more likely three Jawas than it is Ezra or Canaan. <laughs> Always three there are. Uh, down. Anyway, uh -huh. um, shall I go on? Because sure, sure. Okay, okay. Balin Skull, with his fight with Ahsoka, says a few things. One of the things his one of the things he says is, "I am here for the greater good." Uh -huh. Okay. Another thing he says to Ahsoka is that you are just like your master. Another thing he says to her is all you know is destruction and death. He is constantly focused on her being more like Anakin and less the hero we think she is. So he's coming at her from a completely different viewpoint. Now, another thing that they say on that, um, uh, the, the YouTube guy there, both his skull and Hati, their lightsabers are orange. They are not red. Not red, yes. They are not Sith. These are not Sith, and they are not Inquisitors. They are something else. Um, one of the last things, one of the last things he says, and I want to get this straight. He said, well, he I'm getting I'm getting them all out of order, but one of the things he says to her is, um, many died before they would see what Anakin would become. And he he said that to her, like, and we're supposed to think, does that leave a scar with you? But it's more like, I believe, okay, and this is I'm gonna put this all together. I believe he thinks that she is like her master. And that he is there truly for the greater good. He's there to kill Thrawn. Oh. That's interesting. He was so disenchanted with the Jedi Order because of their failure to be who they were supposed to be that he is now doing what none of them could do. And he is he is taking up the charge that he is the only one that can do what is right. He is there for the greater good. Right. Hadi has no idea. She has no idea. She is his Padawan, and she is doing whatever he says because he is very manipulative. He has an ability to talk to people. He is very charismatic. And he is also very strong with the Force. So he has an ability to manipulate those around him. And I believe he's manipulating um, uh, the Elizabeth. witch there. Yep. You left out a line that ties in with what you're saying, too. Yes, I know. But she I said know, something about faith, and he said, I lost faith a long time ago. Yes. Yes. That doesn't mean that he's evil. No. There's there's a lot of signs point to the fact that he's not evil, that he is completely on his own. Ah Ahsoka has this path. Balin Skull has this path. And, and they are not necessarily in opposite directions. Interesting. That is a very interesting. Yeah. Now, now here's, now here's, okay. So North, North, Norse mythology is where all of these, all this imagery comes from the wolves, Skull and Hati, they actually mean, um, uh, I just, I, I wrote it earlier, uh, mockery and hate. So they are, they are from, those two names are from Norse myth mythology. So, and that's where, that's where Filoni got them. And that's how, that's nice. how and why he's using them. These are known, these are known mythological creatures that are there to cause havoc in the universe. So that it, it, I might be wrong. I hope I'm not, but it's just it's just where my where my head's at right now. Huh. 
Wow. Interesting yeah. spin, huh? Interesting. Very. Very. Uh, and my biggest takeaway this episode was the Dave Filoni uh, voices chopper. You just figured that out? No, I actually they, they talked about that after the first two episodes. But the fact that they just modulated his voice and he gets to do all the the droid swears. So, <laughs> and everything Chopper says are, are words, and we're yes. getting we're getting better and better at translating what those words are. Uh oh, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> Um, but I've, I literally, the only other thing I've watched in the last few weeks since we've recorded an actual episode is, uh, they live with Roddy Piper. So Hugh, um, I guess it's for you to bring it home and what else have you been watching? Uh, well, I mentioned the retaliators. Uh, I'm caught up on heels. Um, this season is firing on all cylinders. Kevin, maybe this will help you understand us more but I think that you should seek out the first season of heels and see if it's something you would like um, this, this second season, the writing is so good. I wish they were writing WWE television um, because they're, they're putting together a better storyline, a better fake storyline than the people who do it professionally. Um, I just, it's, it's so good in pulling in so much history uh, in, in the most recent episode, there's a flashback to his father. And when he went to, uh, was trying to get into WCW and went to to New, or to New York or wherever it was to meet Ted Turner in his office and all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, Eric Bischoff called me and they're really hot on, you know, the King of Spades. And it was, it was cool because they're bringing it, they're establishing it very firmly in our real world. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, nice. which, which is neat. Um, and, and during that time was the time WCW was hot and Turner was running it and Bischoff was getting all the wrestlers. So uh I, it's it's becoming here's the, the the it's so good that my wife actually likes it and and she does not like wrestling she wants nothing to do with wrestling but she really enjoys the show and looks forward to, she'll pick it over something else if we have two things to watch and nice. i think that says a lot because that means take all the wrestling out it's a good show yeah. um i'm gonna be really sad if they don't uh renew this for like 10 years because i i could watch this forever um, the other thing I caught, oh, I caught the boogeyman, the, uh, the most recent horror film based on a Stephen King short story, um, decent movie. It's not gonna, it doesn't break any new ground, but, um, I, I wasn't upset that we watched it. It was good. And, uh, the big thing in the household right now is we ran out of stuff to watch or at, watch after Stargate, you know, Avery, you know, I thought she was going to be devastated when Supernatural ended. I mean, she had a fucking meltdown fit that night. Um, didn't have a meltdown fit this time, but I didn't know what we were going to watch next. And I took a big gamble and I chose something that I've never seen. So this is new for us. Our family show is something I've never watched. So it's all oh. new to me, too. We're watching Farscape. Oh, nice. And oh. and what's interesting and the reason I thought maybe even though it's it's kind of weird it's got two of the actors from the, the latter seasons of Stargate in it. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much kind of playing the same characters to the point there's an episode of Stargate where um, somebody's they're, they're thinking about making the Stargate public and they're doing a documentary. And since there's TV guys on the base, this one character played by Claudia Black, who is also in Farscape, she tries to pitch to this producer a story about a guy, you know, trapped on an uh, who gets stranded on an island, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, stop it. That's Gilligan's Island. If you're going to rip something off, rip off something more secure. And she goes, OK, I have this idea about an astronaut who gets sucked through a wormhole and gets stuck in another part of the galaxy. That's Farscape. That's the show that her and the other guy <laughs> of the show were on before they were on Stargate. A uh, really great call out. Um, so far, really good. Aliens are all. um they're all practical. There's a lot of uh, puppetry in the show. We have one oh, of the main cool. characters is a puppet. Yeah, it, it's weird. You get so used to seeing CGI stuff, and all of a sudden you've got this practical stuff here. Um, little challenging to get into because the characters aren't immediately likable, but it's getting there. We, we're down to the last episode of the first season, and uh, she gets mad when we can only watch one episode a night. So. <laughs> I watched that show. I've never I, seen it. Yeah. Um, I hear it gets better after the first season. I hear it gets much better. Nice. Yeah. If this if this flies all the way to the end, I'm going to give Babylon Five a shot. Outstanding. Nice. Another one that I've never seen. 
sure that I comes did, as a shock. I did forget to tell you something, Hugh. What's that? We started Vikings. Oh, nice. okay. You'll have to let me know how that goes. I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really engaged with any of the characters. Really? How far are you into it, though? <laughs> only, only like three episodes. Okay. Um, they just actually they just uh, they just took the monastery. Which is oh yeah, took, yeah, that's that like episode cool. three or whatever. Yep, that's uh, that's a that's a quick turning point. Things change quickly from there. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Just wait till you get to the point, you know, a few seasons down the road where you hate every character on the show and want them all to die. <laughs> this is true. Interesting. True. Yeah. I don't, there, there will be a point get... in time where everybody is doing something bad and you just fucking hate everyone. And eventually they turn it around, and, you know, for, for the end of the, the series. But I was just like... I mean, it's it's one thing for your heroes to have faults, but for everybody to just be a, a nasty douchebag, all of them. It's like nobody, I don't want anyone on this show to live. I don't know who to root for. I mean, at least on Game of Thrones, no matter what he did, Peter Dinklage was funny, so you could root for him. But uh, I don't know. Well, I have to keep reminding myself, you know, this is, you know, before 900 um AD, right? 900 AD, right? It was like eight something AD. I have no idea. 893 or something like that, what Kathy said. I have to remember the, the time and I have to remember the, the, the type of people they were. They didn't they didn't know any better. They just they thought that they just needed to Oh, but you conquer. can't say times were different. You're not allowed <laughs> well, to say that. Well, I mean, they just had to they felt like they had to conquer everything and take whatever they wanted. And, and the fact that somebody led them. Or that they allow themselves to be led is what surprises me. But I guess I guess those kind of things are going to get turned around as we go on this show. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Yeah, it's all right. We're going to watch it. We're going to we've we've had it on our list for a while. We got a few things, you know, different all the different services we have. We have our list of things that we should we should see. So all those things that you guys have told us, we add them onto the list, and when we get around to it, we we start it. It's hard for us to start a new series. It really is because. It's a commitment, and I I wish I didn't look at it like a commitment because sometimes I get disappointed. When I get disappointed, I get really upset that I wasted. I've noticed. <laughs> Wasn't me this time. I didn't. I didn't go there. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, if that's all you guys got, I think that about wraps it up. Looking at the list to make sure we didn't miss anything. Wrapped it up with a bow. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to drop some wisdom nuggets for y'all. Oh, please. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. On Halloween, we dress up as skeletons and stuff like that. But every other day of the year, our skeletons dress up as us. Ooh. Good night, everybody. And make it for me, bitches. This has been a Geek Pod Network production. production.